Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. You know, sometimes the simplest and most taken for granted items can have a wide variety of uses in a survival situation. Today we're gonna to talk about an item that you absolutely should keep inside your bug out bag or vehicle. It's gonna provide you with shelter, water purification, storage, cordage, first aid, and even personal protection. And the great news is, it can be incredibly durable and only cost you about five bucks. Let's talk about it. So what is this amazing item that can do damn near anything? Drum roll please. Well, it's a simple contractor bag. It's very important, however, that your bag is transparent or at least translucent in order to perform the wide variety of functions that we're gonna discuss today. You can get these in varying degrees of thickness or mil, that's M-I-L. The thicker they are, the more durable, but usually the less transparent and thus potentially less useful for some of the applications we're gonna to discuss today. Now from an emergency preparedness perspective, the first thing you can do with your contractor bag or any garbage bag or drum liner for that matter is to make a makeshift hazmat suit. This is gonna require about three contractor bags. Now you're gonna also need some duct tape and evoke the spirit of your inner red green. This may look kind of silly, and I'm not gonna lie, it will get pretty hot, but it will increase the chances of your survival if there was a chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear incident. This will reduce your risk, but not eliminate the risk. Only a level A hazmat suit with a self-contained breathing apparatus can provide total protection against chemical and biological agents. But if there was a deadly, virulent outbreak of some pathogen, this would be better than nothing. Understanding proper decontamination procedures are equally as important. For actual personal protective hazmat suits, check out the link in the comments section below. Now you can also use your bag for water purification. No water filter, no problem. Using the solar disinfection method, you can use the power of the sun to inactivate dangerous microbes. Solar disinfection, also known as SOTUS, involves putting the contaminated water in a transparent contractor bag and then exposing it to sunlight for at least six to eight hours. The more transparent your bag, the better. This method should only be used in an emergency circumstance where the ability to boil water is limited. This is gonna help you conserve firewood, which of course requires more energy for you to collect. So let the sun do the work if it's available. can also create what's called a solar still with a transparent contractor bag. Now solar stills can distill pure drinking water from almost any vegetation or contaminated water source, even seawater. So this is gonna be especially important for people who live near the ocean. All you need is a hole to be dug, a container to catch the water, and of course, an adequate amount of sunlight to evaporate and condensate the water into the container. This method does take time and should only be relied on if things get really desperate. You can also extract the water from plant vegetation by using the transpiration method as shown here. Simply put your bag over some leafy vegetation and slowly the purified water will collect in the bottom corner. Once again, this method is gonna be limited in terms of the amount of time it takes and the actual amount of water that you'll yield. Other water-based applications for a contractor bag are things like using it as a flotation device. Theoretically, this could work. We even attempted to craft a dinghy with a heat gun. Admittedly, we failed in this experiment, but we're gonna keep trying and we'll keep you posted on the results. You can also make a makeshift shower. Simply hang the bag over a tree, poke some holes in one end, tie it off when not in use. There is also the other potential use of using it as an emergency rain poncho. The benefit of the method here is that it's gonna help you to keep your head dry and it's going to be adjustable. Just follow the steps that we demonstrate here and you'll be able to stay nice and dry and minimize the risk of hypothermia. Now one of the primary uses for your contractor bag is gonna be in terms of emergency shelters. Up first is this hammock. Now this was totally experimental and actually worked out better than we expected. 
For this, you're gonna wanna have a very strong contractor bag, at least five mil and above. This will also require you to cut a seam in your bag to expand it. Make sure you cut along the bottom seam, that is the part that's been heat sealed together, as this is going to be the weakest point of the bag. Find some rocks or create some wooden nubs from a tree and you are four clove hitches away from lounging in the woods. The benefits of this hammock is you won't lose heat from the ground, but honestly, in a survival situation, this probably isn't the most practical use of your bag. Protection from the elements is vital, especially during the rainy season or winter time. A simple rain fly method where we tie off the four corners is shown here. This of course will require some cordage that you hopefully have in your survival pack anyways. The cordage we are showing here is a special kind of paracord called survivor cord that has a variety of different strands that can be used for a multitude of purposes in a survival situation. Now if it gets really cold where you live, there's an amazing hack that can turn your survival shelter into a wilderness sauna in even the coldest of conditions. It's called the Morris Kaczynski Super Shelter. It works by draping a transparent contractor bag in between your shelter and the fire. The radiant heat will penetrate through your shelter just like sunlight through a greenhouse and get trapped inside so long as your shelter is reasonably sealed. We demonstrate this on an abnormally hot October day here, here in the north. And after a minute in being there, I can tell you that I want it out. It just got incredibly hot. But on a cold winter Canadian day, this would absolutely be a lifesaver and it works much better than you would think. There are countless ways to employ this radiant heat principle using the Morris Kuczynski method, so go and try it out. Now if you need to just get warm in a pinch to collect your thoughts, you can simply just jump inside your contractor bag, cut a hole in it for breathability and ventilation, and use it as an emergency blanket. Just expect some condensation buildup and potential sweating. This should not be used or relied on as a long-term solution. There are plenty of other uses for your contractor bag. For example, it works incredibly well as a mattress. Just get any vegetation, cattail fluff or grass, leaves, whatever you can find, stuff your bag as full as you can and you'll be sleeping in luxury compared to the cold ground. This will also stop you from losing heat to the ground. You can use your bag for foraging or even storing food at night away from the bears. Just fire it over a hanging branch like we do here and you won't get jacked in the middle of the night. You can also use it as a dry bag or a pack liner if you have to hike in the rain. The exterior of your pack may get wet, but not the contents. You can also make cordage out of it by cutting strips. You can use these for lashing or for making trail markers for navigational or signaling purposes. There are a wide variety of first aid applications, such as using it as a stretcher, a sling for a broken arm, or even a tourniquet. There are plenty of things that might work better as a tourniquet, but a heavy gauge contractor bag could be used if it's all you had in order to minimize blood loss. Lastly, a friend of mine at the Gardening in Canada YouTube channel notified me that leaves make excellent supplemental fertilizer, more specifically called leaf mold. You can do this by putting leaves in bags for the off season. Now, while this is not sufficient to provide all the nutrients that your soil needs, this natural soil conditioner will improve the water holding capacity, enhance soil structure, increase water and air movement within the soil, and provide a habitat for the soil's micro and macro organisms, meaning that you'll be able to grow more food after the apocalypse. There are undoubtedly countless other survival and preparedness uses for your contractor bag. Let us know what ideas you have in the comments section below. If you want to know where to get these large contractor bags, you can usually pick them up at your local hardware store or you can get some at CanadianPreparedness.com. Good luck and stay safe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.